Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and let's talk about coffee. Coffee. Oh, is this the nectar of the gods or just something that you're not that into? Coffee is, oh my gosh, it's so interesting. It's such a cultural phenomenon. Every I'll meet you for coffee. I'll see you for coffee. Coffee is, can be the center of our world. And so today I want to dive into coffee as it relates to a little bit to energy and to sleep and how those all those things interact um, and things that maybe you should think of whenever you're uh, enjoying that cup of coffee. Um, because if you are someone who loves coffee, I'm not going to take it away from you, but there are things that I think you should know. So first thing, how does coffee impact your sleep? Coffee works through this molecule called adenosine. Adenosine is in our body and as it builds up over the course of the day, it actually makes us sleepy. So higher levels of adenosine, more likely you want to fall asleep. Coffee blocks the adenosine. So it binds to the receptor. It means that our body can't receive that message from adenosine, which makes us awake and alert. So in the morning, when you maybe haven't cleared all the adenosine out from overnight and you still got some of that stuff floating around, you drink that cup of coffee, the caffeine binds to those receptors and instantly you feel awake and alert. It's not that it's not there, the adenosine isn't there, it's that it can't signal to your body that you're tired. So as the day wears on and you're, you metabolize the coffee and it kind of leaves the system, you're going to feel drowsier and drowsier because that adenosine is going to now be available to bind to the receptors. So that's how coffee works, which is important to know when you're thinking about how you're using coffee throughout your day. If you have trouble falling asleep at night, you want to make sure that you have enough adenosine. If you're drinking coffee or caffeine in general too late in the day, that can make it harder to fall asleep because our body isn't responding to the adenosine in our system. So the timing of your coffee intake, the quantity as well, but the timing is really important when it comes to sleep. A good rule is to cut coffee out by about noon, okay? So morning can be, oh, amazing, wonderful, indulging in coffee time, but by about noon, you should be weaning off that coffee. I get asked a lot, is coffee healthy? Like almost everything, the answer is yes and no. Um, too much coffee is definitely not healthy, but too much water also isn't healthy. You can die from drinking too much water. Very unusual, but possible, right? So like, everything moderation is where it's at with coffee as well so beyond making us feel good coffee does have some health benefits when we're drinking it in moderation so there is some evidence to suggest that coffee intake can decrease our risk of both alzheimer's and parkinson's disease um, coffee can help your exercise performance it can improve your mental clarity and your your ability to think, your cognitive function your ability to think and it can, in theory, also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, so heart, heart attacks and strokes, which is pretty incredible. Um, it's also thought to be able to reduce the risk of some cancers, particularly like the oral cancer, so tongue, throat, that kind of thing. But too much coffee can um, make you jittery and nervous, increase your blood pressure, increase your heart rate. And caffeine can also actually um, uh, heighten your stress response. So it can stimulate adrenaline and cortisol release from the body. And so too much coffee can very easily put you into a state of too much stress, which has all sorts of long-term health, sleep, energy, et cetera, impacts. So like everything, moderation is always where I recommend you keep your coffee intake. So how much is moderation when it comes to coffee? Um, it depends. It depends on the brewing method. It depends on where you get your coffee. It depends on kind of what size your cup of coffee is. So a standard cup of coffee, which is about eight ounces or about 250 milliliters, contains roughly 100 milligrams of caffeine. Okay, so that's very rough. I'll come back to that. The most I would like you to be drinking in a day is about 400 milligrams. So by that math, you could have four, you know, regular cup size coffee cups in a day before before noon though remember because we want to cut our coffee and take off around noon but many of us consume coffee in like a very large mug or a big a big like soup bowl and so knowing how much is in there is pretty easy to maybe have two to three cups of coffee in that like travel mug or something and so already you're at two to three hundred milligrams which is now getting up on your daily limit of caffeine if you're a fan of Starbucks, Starbucks tends to be higher on the caffeine caffeine quantity. So a tall, like just a standard brewed, like Pike Place coffee at Starbucks, a tall 
has about 235 milligrams of caffeine and a grande has over 300. So if you're just grabbing a grande uh, Starbucks for the day, you know, that would be, that's 300 milligrams. That's your coffee for the day. If you're in Canada and you're a Tim Hortons fan, a medium size has about 200 milligrams of caffeine. So you could get away with having about two of those in a day. And at McDonald's, their large size has about 180 milligrams. So again, right, it depends on where you're getting it, depends on how it's brewed, and it depends on the size. If you're more of a fan of espresso, one shot of espresso has about 75 milligrams of caffeine. So one shot of espresso actually has less caffeine than a grande, just um, brewed coffee from Starbucks. So what about other types of caffeine? Because coffee, I talk about coffee, I pick on coffee, but coffee is certainly not the be all and end all when it comes to caffeine. There's lots of other types of, lots of other places that you'll find caffeine. Even decaf has, decaf coffee has some caffeine in it. Um, again, when we talk about standard size, so about 250 mils or eight ounces, a cup of decaf coffee has about 15 milligrams of caffeine. So much, much smaller than regular, but not nothing, right? Some people are really sensitive to caffeine and even that little bit of caffeine in a decaf can cause them sleep issues. Um, other people are not going to notice it at all. Tea does have caffeine. So black tea has a good amount of caffeine, half the caffeine as a cup of coffee. So again, if you're getting like a grande at Starbucks, you're looking at about 150 milligrams of caffeine, but that also depends on how, you know, so a black tea versus an herbal tea, but it also depends on how long you're steeping it. Herbal teas don't have any caffeine. So things like, oh my God, there's so many, but like a rooibos tea, for example, a peppermint tea, they're not going to have any caffeine at all. Green tea also has caffeine. And so people talk about, um, you know, oh, the, the caffeine in my green tea, it doesn't have nearly as much as you think it does. So again, when we're relating to size here, so in a standard size, if coffee is about 100 milligrams of caffeine, black tea has about half of that, so about 50 to 60. Green tea is going to have around 30 milligrams of caffeine. Now, this also does have to do with the brewing process. So the way that we brew coffee versus the way that we brew tea is different. Um, tea, the caffeine doesn't seem to translate out of tea as well as it does out of coffee, which could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending. But generally speaking, coffee, or sorry, generally speaking, tea does have less caffeine than coffee does. And pop or soda, if you're in the States, also can have caffeine in it. Um, it's, you know, pretty minimal. A can of Coke has about 34 milligrams of caffeine. So not zero and more than decaf, but certainly not anywhere close to a, you know, a grande Starbucks. And I'll say that if pop is your go-to, caffeine is not your limiting factor there. It's going to be sugar. So I can do another thing about pop another time. But um, just know there is caffeine in it. Generally not too much to be concerned about. So like everything, coffee is not good or bad. It just is. Consuming coffee in moderation, definitely okay. But make sure that you're not having too much of it. So you're not um, suffering from some of the downfalls of caffeine. And make sure that you're cutting it off around noon. Now, if you're one of the subset of people that coffee doesn't really impact your sleep, that's amazing. Um, but if you have already tried to cut out your caffeine or you have reduced your caffeine intake already, or you're, you know, you're strict with that like noon rule, but you're still having challenges falling asleep. Um, I have a few other recommendations I'm going to make. I'm going to actually link them down below. So you can check out another video that I have. Uh, that might give you some other suggestions on places to start if the coffee is something that you've already addressed. And if you're someone who loves to kind of sip on warm beverages throughout the day, in the afternoon, you can just switch to herbal teas. Okay, that's everything for me today. If you have any questions about sleep and caffeine, let me know. Again, you can head over and watch that other video on resource, other resources and other things to try to help you um, fall asleep a little bit more easily. Let me know if you have any questions and I hope you have a great day.